Hey, what's up guys and welcome to Xbox On. Now, one of my favorite things about the Xbox is the fact that there are so many free games for you to get your hands on. Yeah, you can play Fallout Shelter now on your Xbox Ones for free and there are plenty of other incredible games that you can play without spending a single penny. So here are some of our favorites. Let's kick off the list with one of the weirder free games out there. Roblox isn't a game in itself, but a portal to a world of user-generated mini-games. At one end of the scale, you have pretty normal online deathmatch games, but venture forth into the depths of the game's library and you might find yourself gliding over a serene forest in a bird simulator. It's not going to win any prizes for graphics, but I had a hoot playing it. The birds hoot? Anyway, moving swiftly on. Every game is built from the same blocky parts, but there's a great variety on offer. One second you're bounding across an obstacle course, and the next you're baking yourself into a cake in order to feed yourself to a giant hungry man. In perhaps the weirdest game, you enter a lift, press the button, and find yourself shot into a nightmarish slide. I think someone needs some calm time on the quiet step. I also quite like how Roblox has been used to build slightly wonky versions of pre-existing games. Squint hard enough and this tower pushing effort could be an early prototype for For Honor. And this one is a straight up ripoff of the Slenderman game. It's not quite as scary when Slenderman himself appears to have a tic tac for a head. And if the promise of playing knockoff indie games doesn't win you over, then why not play it for the achievements? You get a whopping 200 points for just trying 15 different games. You can't turn your nose up at that. If the words free to play fill your head with images of budget action and ropey production values, you should definitely check out Warframe. From the second you boot it up, it's clear that a lot of effort has gone into producing a AAA feeling game. It has slick cutscenes, cool art design, and action controls that feel nice and slick under your thumbs. You play as a Tenno, an alien race that wear Warframes to go to battle. They can pull off some extreme violence with a sword, though they are just as comfortable with guns and bows. The weapons you choose have a big impact on the way you play. By selecting a bow, we opted for a more stealthy approach, picking off alien guards with headshots or sniping them from zip lines above. Clearing out a mission without getting spotted makes you feel like a bit of a god. Of course, getting messy with a sword is also a lot of fun. The game reminds us a bit of Destiny. You team up in parties to take on co-op story missions, collecting new pieces of equipment or harvesting materials used to craft better items. The missions don't rewrite the action rulebook in any major way, though the action is fast and satisfying enough to keep you coming back. And once you've developed your ass kicking abilities to a suitable level, you can take on other players in Conclave, which is very similar to Bungie's Crucible. Of course, this being a free to play game, it does allow you to get head by purchasing packs of currency for easier character development, though we've been getting along just fine without dipping into extra funds. Crucially, you do get a sword for free, as long as we can chop up alien scum, we're pretty happy. Adventure Pop is a free riff on the classic arcade game Puzzle Bobble. As in that game, you control a bubble shooting gun at the bottom of the screen and have to fire at a wall of coloured bubbles with the aim of popping the orbs by matching the colours. It's an incredibly simple game, but can get pretty addictive, especially when you start using bouncing shots to slot the bubble into hard to reach corners, or wiping out huge chunks of the board with just one shot. Although the entire game can be played for free, the developers do try to tempt you to open your wallet with the introduction of special power-ups. As handy as it is to add a precision laser sight to your cannon, it's definitely possible to make your way through the story mode without spending a single penny. And yes, that means unlocking loads of free achievements as you go. And once you've exhausted the story mode, you can try out two-player battles, where popping the bubbles on your side adds more obstacles to your opponent's screen. The online community is small, but fiercely competitive, so do expect some vicious beatings. And hey, they're free! That's gotta mean something, right? World of Tanks has been on Xbox since the 360, with the Xbox One offering a gorgeous visual update for the classic multiplayer game. The title tells you everything that you need to know. This is a world of tanks. Think of it as a military obsessed version of Pixar's car film. It does raise some questions as why are there houses and washing lines in a world populated entirely by tanks? But once you start blowing holes in the enemy, any questions just go out the window. Also, the window is blown to pieces. Yeah. 
It's a pretty simple online shooter. If you can steer a tank in Battlefield, then you have all the training that you need. What makes things more complicated though is the huge range of tanks available from collections taken from all over the world. There are all-rounders that trundle along spilling out moderate death, there are tiny models with pea shooter cannons and incredible speed, perfect for scouting out enemy territory, or you could risk a horribly slow brute with a vicious cannon. Though, one of the great things about the game is how the unlock system works. You get each nationality basic tank for free and can then upgrade or purchase new models with experience earned by using it. Yes, you can increase your odds of survival by forking out real money for health items and the like, but you can enjoy a huge range of clanking metal death without reaching for your wallet. If you've ever played Battlefield 1 and wish that all the people, horses and planes would take a hike, then maybe it's time to relocate to World of Tanks. Only a tiny bit of Pinball FX2 is free, but we think it's enough to include it on our list. Download the free base game and you can get access to Sorcerer's Lair for free. It's one of Zen Studios' own creations, unlike tables based on Marvel or Star Wars and the like. But even this single table can offer up hours of entertainment. It's rammed with the scoring opportunities and hidden features that we come to expect from Zen's designs. You might see the ball vanish into a second table beneath the main table for example, or arrive in this mechanical mini game where you stand a chance of claiming a massive bonus prize. Maybe you can cause the table to become infested with ghosts, each one delivering a tasty half a million points every time you smack them in their dumb ghost faces. Wait, wouldn't the ball pass through them? The hook that keeps us playing is the inclusion of your friend's scores on the leaderboard. You're constantly being made aware of how close you are to getting another player's score, making you extra nervous on the flippers, but also filling you with smug satisfaction when you finally beat them. And when you eventually tire of banging a ball around the sorcerer's lair, you're only a handful of change away from adding new tables to the mix. Hey, it's still cheaper than trying to become a pinball wizard in a seafront arcade, am I right? Now, if you've got games with gold, many of you will have downloaded Killer Instinct Season 2 and will be enjoying the full range of characters and unlocks. But if you're late to the party, don't worry about it because you can actually enjoy this revival of Rare's arcade classic for free. The basic version of Killer Instinct comes with two characters that you can permanently unlock, the legendary warrior Monk Jago and spinning kick expert Orchid. They are yours to do with as you like. You can play the arcade mode, dip into the in-depth training dojo, or train up a shadow version that behaves a lot like Forza's Drivatars. Teach them the right moves and these AI fighters will be kicking ass and taking names even when you're away from the console. On top of Jago and Orchid, there is always one other character in circulation, letting you test out other fighters before deciding if you want to pay to unlock them. Considering that most fighting game fans like to focus on a couple of main characters, the ability to spend some time with individual members of the fight roster is actually really smart. If you don't like the way a certain character handles, then put them aside and wait for the next fighter to become available. And even with only a small slice of the game to enjoy, there is a huge amount to do here. Microsoft keep updating the game with awesome features, like on Valentine's Day for example, they added ultimates, which act like Mortal Kombat's fatalities, and end the match on a more brutal note. Then there is a huge Shadow Lords mode that was added last year. This story mode mixes in elements of RPG character development and loot drops into an ongoing global war against the series' big bad villain, Gargos. Okay so it still boils down to kicking the living daylights out of a range of weird fantasy characters, but it's great to see a fighting game put more thought into the single player mode than just fight every character once and then go home. Now, Mortal Kombat might have the violence and Street Fighter has the cred, but Killer Instinct is the smartest and most generous fighting game around. <laughs> When it comes to picking our number one free-to-play game, it has to be Fallout Shelter. If you've not yet downloaded it, then the idea is very easy to get your head around. You're put in charge of a new vault, the underground bunkers designed to keep society alive while everything outside burns in a horrible nuclear apocalypse. You do this by carving facilities into the soil and forcing survivors to work in them in order to earn the resources needed to keep everyone alive. It's typical. You manage to escape the horror of the wasteland only for a maniac in a cave to force you to make sandwiches for the rest of your life. 
It's quite a hands-off game compared to the heads-off action of Fallout 4. Once you've got the basics in place, you can just check in on a daily basis to harvest resources and make small adjustments. If you're the impatient type, or you're running perilously low on vital food or water, you can rush a room, which speeds up production at the risk of a terrible accident. Winning a rush feels great, though messing it up and triggering a massive fire or an outbreak of rad roaches makes you feel like a lousy boss. If it all begins to feel too claustrophobic, you can unlock the option to send vault dwellers on missions into the wasteland. These play like cartoon versions of the main game, complete with gunfights, looting, and conversations with the terrible freaks who call the wasteland home. These missions are a great chance to unlock rare items or to source new characters to come live at the vault, though they can take a hefty chunk of real time to complete. And it's your impatience that is targeted by the game's microtransactions. You can fork out for bottles of Nuka Cola that speed up waiting times, making the game move at a faster pace. If you don't want to spend any money, you can just dip into the game every day, check up on everyone, and patiently wait for events to play out at their own pace. Either way, it's addictive stuff. And thanks to being an Xbox Play Anywhere game, you can feed that addiction whether you're on your Xbox One or a Windows 10 PC. Time to enter the vault and kiss your social life goodbye. So there we have it, just some of our favorite free games. Let us know what your favorites are in the comments below. And also, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future videos. And don't forget to smash that like button if you enjoyed this video and to check out last week's list show whilst you're at it. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.